Not necessarily financially, I believe that will be a part of it, but it will absolutely uh, enrich your life over these three days, and it'll be something you won't go away from, okay, except for the fasting part. Um, the other one is fitness. I wanted you to focus on your fitness. You pro- a guy that was 320 plus pounds, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in this month. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you in. I, I, I prayed about it real hard. I'm, I'm going to share a picture with you. It's one of the last pictures I have of my mother. My mother, uh, uh, I miss her every day. Um, she, she died way too early as far as I would consider in the flesh. I know the Lord has a plan. I've got a picture of her that I keep that she's in a wheelchair. My, my mother was what they considered morbidly obese before she died. Uh, I, believe it, I believe it hindered her healing process. I know God doesn't make any mistakes. I want to share with you a picture that I, that I keep that I, I want you to know that my mother was a life of the situation. That my sense of humor, my personality, man, they are, they are directly pipelined in from her DNA. Uh, she, she was a nut. She, she would get on the, the, the speaker uh, where she worked in the plant and make uh, flatulating, if you want me to be real, you know. She just was crazy, man. She was just crazy. She, she, she had the most practical wit about her, though she barely had a high school education. All right, but she was the greatest counselor that I have ever known in my entire life. And uh, so anyway, I, I'm going to let you in on some things. Uh, so it means I'm going to be vulnerable and, 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 and some of my, my, my struggles as, as, a, as a fat kid. All right, and I don't mean that to be belittling or anything like that. I just want to be real with you, okay? And I've never, ever, 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 as long as I've been going to church and been pastoring and been plugged into podcasts, anything like that, I've never heard a series that really brought out how important the body is to God, and I'm going to do that this month, all right? And you don't have to agree with any, you don't have to agree with me at all, man, I'm not, but I'm going to rightly divide the Word of God. That's what we're about here one. And so in that fitness, I, I uh, am excited. Vince, I know that you're here. Heath has them there. Uh, I, I'm a member of several different gyms. One of them is Gold's Gym in Clemson, and uh, I, I love it there. I love the, the technology and the, the amount of equipment and the space that they have. Um, and so what, what I did is, in, in lieu of this, uh, sit down with the leadership there, Rob Harrell and, and, and uh, uh, Jeremy Mize and others that are staff and team there. And uh, what they're going to do is, 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 I want these guys to pass them out to you. They're going to give you, starting today, they're going to give you 30 days free, all right, all access to the to Gold's Gym. And so you have the opportunity to take this pass, free pass. There's no strings attached, all right? Some of you have asked me, well, if I go there, are they going to give me the run around? Is there some kind of, no, 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 they're not. I'm going to tell you what to expect when you go for the first time, all right? Really, if you've never been or haven't been to a gym in a while, you're going to be super intimidated, okay? Don't be. Most of the people in here are dorks anyway, all right? Okay? It's just the way you got to look at it. Don't picture them naked. Don't do that, all right? I don't, I don't agree with that. I just picture everybody as a dork, okay? Just dork. They're dorky just like me. Everybody's weird just like me. Everybody has, so everybody is intimidated just like me. But we as children of the Most High God, we turn our fear into faith and we get out of the boat. And so what to expect when you go in there? You gotta crush that fear, you gotta suck it up, you gotta put your big boy pants on or your big girl pants on and you gotta go in there. And that there's no reference to your size, okay? You gotta go in there. When you go in, you need to tell them that you're from one community church. It's important that you get this. You gotta tell them you're from one community church. You mention my name, that's not important, that's not about my name. So you need to mention one community church. If it's after nine in the morning, you need to ask for Rob. Okay, say that name back to me. Rob. You need to ask for Rob. Okay, all right, or some of the management. They're, they're, they're expecting you. What they're going to do is they're going to take that card that you're about to get, okay, and they're going to walk you through the process. They're going to put you in the computer, no strings attached, they're put you in the computer so you don't have to carry this card with you all the time. And then they're going to do uh, what, you know, uh, what we know as a tour. They're just going to show you the facility, uh, and you're going to walk around. They do this all the time. This, this past month, uh, January, I've seen more people in there because, you know, January, uh, and right before spring, man, the gym's getting booked and busy, okay? All right, they usually don't last long. But anyway, and so they're going to give you a tour, make you feel familiar with the stuff that they have there, maybe introduce you to some people during their in management, and then in, in, in leadership, they can help you understand some stuff, and then you just go at it, okay? All right? If my schedule will allow me, if you will let me know the time that you're going down there, I do not mind meeting you and going in with you if it will help you, all right? I'm very serious about this, or I would not sit down with the leadership there and work out a deal with them, Okay? All right, so he can mention, when you pass those out, I want everybody to have one care how old you are. I want you to have one. If, if folks are not here today, we'll make sure that they get them next week. Now, I want you to listen to me because they're moving around. It's not me to give you like, we're about to go. No, nope, we're not about to go. And he preached it. You know what I'm saying? I got to give some more. All right, but I'll still let you be the first at the steakhouse. Um, under fitness, I also not only wanted to, to, to show you how important your body is to God, but also what you put inside your body. From inside here, is what flows out the issues of life, according to the scriptures. And so we're also, we haven't done it in, 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 in over a year, we're going to issue a fast, okay? All right, how many, how many of you fast? 
<laughs> well, someone like this might not. Well, yeah, no, I ate a donut. I don't know. I mean, we ordered two boxes and won't be here till, uh, next week or the next week, I believe. Uh, Sandra ordered them. And uh, we, what we're going to do is, we, we, I, I love, you listen to me say amen. I believe in the Daniel fast, uh, but I want you to understand something. We live under grace, not guilt. Okay? Amen. And so, I want you to know that if, if, you, if you don't want to do the Daniel fast, if somebody said, what's the Daniel fast? Well, if you go to Daniel chapter 1, the first time he, he actually observes, Daniel observes his fast for 10 days. And what's awesome, it says, I think in, in, in verse 10 of chapter 1 of Daniel, it literally says, because he really he competed, he put himself up against the king's uh, guys and gals that would be eating uh, the rich food and the wine on the table and all this good stuff. He said, well, you 10 days, I'll just eat fruit and I'll just eat vegetables and the things that, that God has you know, it, it, it told me that I was to eat. And after those 10 days, he and his crew were buffer and better looking than the crew that had all those things. And so God, God began to open the door. And I, I look at this thing. Then we find over in chapter 10 of Daniel where he, it says he mourns for 21 days. It, it literally talks about And that's where we get the, the 21 day Daniel fast. We, we're going to go 28 days. We're going to go all of, all of February. So, some of you, how many of you did the Daniel fast with us last time we issued it? I mean, just a few of you, but some of you have already let me know you, you never do that again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get a card. Hold your hand up. Everybody got a card. That's your, that's your free membership to Gold's Gym and Clemson. Okay. Value probably, I don't know, I, I, really $300, $400. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. Okay. All right. And so all, all those things. 50 a month. Thank you, Vinny. 50, 50 a month. Oh, let me say that while I'm there. Rob not only said, here, all access, child care, excuse me, all the cardio classes, boot camp, butt kicking, spin class, whatever, all, right, all that stuff. He not only said that, he said, but if you present them with that car, let them know you're from here. Within these 30 days, within these 30 days, you can join Gold's Gym and make it something you do for the rest of your life or the rest of this year if you want to for $19.99. That's all access. That's child care. That's class membership, all those things, all that stuff's way. So where you would pay fifty dollars a month and you would have to pay additional fees to get your card and to activate and all that stuff, it's waiving all that. Or if you want to do a yearly, it's two hundred thirty-nine dollars, something like that. So it's an incredible deal because you know they still got to make money. Still living. These thirty days, you know, you don't ever have to go again. Okay, you don't have to go this month if you don't want to. That's when you and the Lord. I just want to give you an opportunity to take care of yourself. And so, now, back to the fasting. I, I want to I wanna hunker down here for a moment, and, and I promise you I'm going somewhere. I promise you. I promise you. I want you to remember, grace, not guilt. Your fast, your fast might be, hey, I'm giving up Starbucks this month. As a matter of fact, I read someone posted that you're giving up fast food. So, I, they'll, they'll already be richer. And, 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 and won't kill themselves. Okay? You know? So... It could be anything. It could be that where you read the newspaper, you say, well, and you may not read the paper, but you read it online or whatever, you understand? Well, you give that up and read your Bible. Fasting, and I, this is not my sermon for today, but I will teach fasting this month. Fasting, yes, it, 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 it has to do with food. Primarily. Fasting is that I abstain from these things of the world, the rich things of this world, so that I draw closer to God. And I'll tell you something, it's difficult. You will be challenged. Whether you do food or whether you give up a TV show or whatever you, whatever you give up, okay? All right? All right? Your frappuccino, double, I mean, whatever. It, you will be challenged, man. It will be difficult. We will be sharing, and I believe Sandra says she's going to create on Pinterest uh, the Daniel Fast. We'll be sharing recipes and stuff like that. So we'll primarily focus on the Daniel Fast for those of you who want to try to do that. Daniel Fast means you just cut out all the... All, all the meats, you just eat, you just eat vegetables and fruits, and, and, and we'll put all the list of stuff up there that you can't have, which you can't have. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to move on, because I'm, I'm preaching on it today, <coughs> on another day. Don't drive yourself crazy. This thing's not about a diet, okay? It's not about a diet. See, for, for, for way too long, people have tried to get skinny instead of trying to be like Jesus. I, I'm not asking you to get skinny, and I don't want you to be intimidated if you think you're overweight or out of shape. I'm not asking, okay, how old you are? There's some of you that are, that are diabetics that I would never ask you to take your pump off. I would ask you to leave some sweets alone, okay? Because you, you're too sweet. That's the problem, man. All right? I, I, would, I, I wouldn't ask you to stop taking your medicine. I, I, all those things. I'm not, listen, don't, don't go fanatic. I didn't ask you to drink no Kool-Aid, man. Okay? 
Alright? I'm just asking you to go by the Bible. I'm gonna break it down for you and teach you, and I promise you I'll lead by example. Alright? But I promise you I will not lose my sanity in the process. Okay? I get all like, <laughs> you know, and then I'm praying hard and I'm reading my Bible and I got all you praying for me. Hey, you know, if I need a cup of coffee, I'm gonna give a cup of coffee. It's grace. I start over tomorrow. You understand me? I do not want you to go crazy. I don't want you, if you go to the gym one time and then you say, well, man, that, that, that blows. I'm not going to do that no more, man. A bunch of meatheads in there, a bunch of freaks, okay? Remember, they're all nuts, okay? Start over tomorrow. You understand what I'm trying to say? This 28 days, I, I want you to give everything you got. I want to decide to hook you up my little thing that I, I want to put my whole self up because I promise you, God loves you. And he loves you as a whole. And so I, I do not want you to be tied down by legalism. I, I want you to be people of grace. And then the, thir the, the third thing I want you to focus on this month is your faith. Starting this afternoon, we'll be posting things that we want you to read every day. You do not have to just read the Bible verses that we share or anything like that. But we want, we want to partner with you to commit for 28 days. I promise you, if you will do it, give it everything you've got. Not under legalism and guilt. Under grace and mercy. It will literally, literally change your life. I promise you, from the inside out. Okay? Now, I, want, I, want to, I do want to preach just a moment, and I, there's so much more that I want to talk about. This thing is, I told Sandra, I've struggled, I've struggled the most. It's the mo most excited I've been, but where to launch from. There's so many things I want to cover. But I, I, I want you to get, to start with, how important it is that you get that God loves you as a whole. All right? So I want to do that. If, if you have your Bible with you, we're going to put, some, we're going to put our main verses on the screen if you have your Bible with your smartphone, whatever it is that you, you carry, or, you, or if you don't have anything at all, that's, that's totally okay. We will, we will put it on the screen for you, okay? All right? I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. I'm going to be reading from the NIV. Not that I think the NIV is better than the King James, New King James, NASB, NLT, or whatever you read from, okay? Just as long as it's about Jesus, you understand what I'm saying, all right? But I'm going to read from the NIV. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. This is what the Bible says. I will not dilly dally anymore. Let's get right to it. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. Now see, that, that's, man, underline that or highlight that. You, you are not your own. That's what we struggle with. Let's piggyback right off of our, our, our last series. You, you can't serve two masters. You, you understand where, where your treasure, that's where your heart will be. Then it's, it's an inside. You, you're not your own. You were bought at a price. What price was that? Jesus Christ is one and only begotten Son. That never sinned, that never done wrong, but took all of our vile, all of our mistakes, and, and, and died for us. Alright? Therefore, therefore, honor God with your... What's that word right there? Honor God with your what? Body. Bodies. Okay, alright. Just, just so that we're all on the same page. I didn't want to misread anything, okay? And honor God with your bodies. Commitment means... A state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity, or etc. Synonyms for that word are dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, and faithfulness. We're asking you to be faithful with your whole body these 28 days. All right? That's what we're asking you to do. We want you to commit, to pray, to fast, to study, to read your Bible, to abstain from the things of the world, to draw closer to God, to practice taking care of the temple that God has placed you in, that God has given you this tent for a while, that you can do the most that you can with what He has given you. And, and this is what we want you to do. We want you to be loyal to that. And here's a phrase that I said several years ago that is not original with me. Here's what I'm trying to get us to get to, where I'm at in my life now, where I am in my life now. I don't want to just exist. I want to live. John 10.10 10 says, I come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. That word abundantly, it literally carries with it. It's the idea of overflowing fulfillment. God said, I don't want to just fill you. God, I, this piggybacks off of the message, right? You know how I operate from, from our last series of stewardship. God, God doesn't just do anything just in this. this. He, he says, I don't only supply your need. I'll give you surplus. I, I, won't, I won't necessarily just feed the 5,000 to 20,000 that were there that day. I'll make sure there's 12 baskets to go with you because he always fixes the go plate. Our God said, I want you to not just exist. I don't want you just to occupy space. I don't want you just to use my oxygen and give me back a little carbon monoxide. I, I want you to live. I want you to have life and that life abundantly, overflowing. That comes from putting our whole self in and do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. Now, 
in this setting, I want you to get, I've never heard this talk, okay? Doesn't mean it hadn't been taught. I don't mean, I, I'm not, I'm not a, a better preacher than anybody, all right? It's not, not what I'm saying, but I've never heard this talk. How much God values your temple or your body? He, 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 here's what I want you to see with me. These are just cross references, not, not anything that's going to be on the screen. Genesis 2, 7 says this, The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The pneuma there we get over in the, in the Greek New Testament, same word in the Hebrew language, that he, that he blew life, spirit, that he, that he gives it to us. Same thing that Paul's writing the church at Corinth when he says, Stop using your body for all the perverse things that you're using it for. Understand you house God inside of you. And to understand God values your body. So don't just give it away. Don't just mark it up. Just don't destroy it or tear it down or take better care. Why? Because God made us. You ever made anything? I'm not talking about that funky donkey ashtray you made back in school. I didn't know this would do that. It's right for, you know, smoking the bathroom. We made ashtrays back in my day. All right? Don't look at me like that. We did. Mine was funky. That thing, whoo, whoo, but it wasn't a little place to put a cigarette or your smoke pipe. Man. It, was just, it was just funky donkey, man. But I'm telling you what it was. I'm telling you, tell you y'all crazy. I'm telling you what it was. I was super. I mean, listen, when I give that thing to my mom and dad, it was like, I made that for you because I love you. Now smoke away. No. <laughs> you said that last part. <laughs> I was really proud of it. You ever made anything like that? You ever, you ever step back from something? Man, I, I love to help he. And we, we cut down trees. Somebody asked me the other day, and I said, yeah, I must help him some. I mean, I'm a pack mule, man. What are you talking about? Work me like a bro. A bar on the dad. I love it because we start a job, and it's like crazy. And then we back up, and we go, God, look what we did. I guarantee you guys do that. When you salvage something, and you, you, you look at it, and somebody was discarding that. And then you step back from it, and you go, wow, look at that. You, you, you take pride in that. And, and, and listen, I, I can take it a step further, but I know some of you haven't been blessed with children of your own. But, but man, if, you, if, if you're a parent or a grandparent, man, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I made that. Sometimes I, I made that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. Pride. God, God, listen, I want you to get this from me. I'm being funny, but I want you I can't help it. But I want you to, I want you to get this. He values your body. He made you. He created you. He formed you from dirt. You're not your own. He stands back and he goes, look at my creation. I wonder sometimes if he doesn't look at me and go, yeah. <laughs> he values the body. For it houses the spirit of God. Not only did he create us, but what is, what, is, what is crazy good is that over in the New Testament in John 1, along about verse 14. They'll call me out later if I got that verse wrong. The address is close. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So not only did he create us, he clothed himself in the very thing that you're destroying. <coughs> that you take for granted. Now, I'm not, I'm not a tree hugger, all right? I'm not knocking a tree hugger. So don't think I'm going hell hippy dippy on you, all right? But maybe I'm a little bit, okay? I should have worn my chocolate up there. Then I would really, I mean, I'd set the stage, wouldn't I? No, man, we, we just, we, we just take for granted. We, we discard stuff. I love it. I love, I love to, to see something that somebody else says, that's trash. And to see that man, there's still value there. If you just put a little love and a little time in it and to understand, God said, listen, even though they've sinned, even though they've messed up, even though, even though they, they struggle, I'm still going to clothe myself in the greatest thing I ever created. Flesh. Now, now, now watch this. The Bible teaches us that God made us now you listen to me say amen. Because I, I, I know that you like when you spit and snort. And if you don't, then don't tell me that. But sometimes I just need to teach, okay? And so I want to teach you something. God made us in his image. God is a triune God. You with me? And I'm trying to be technical with you or flex my educational muscle, okay? I'm not trying to do that at all. Our God is a triune God. He's a Trinitarian God. He's three in one. Now don't ask me to really be able to... In my Milhelian vernacular, be able to explain that to you. I, I don't think I can do that. I still don't have a grasp of it, but I believe in this faith. But when he created us, and I want you to watch this, he made us in his image, all right? So that means that we are three. We are mind. And if you take notes, you can put soul right there beside that, okay? And I'm going to teach you that in just a moment. We're mind, we're body, and we're spirit. 
made in God's image, triune God. Now, what's interesting, what's interesting is when you look these words up, for some of you going, nah, no way, you know. There's a lot of struggle between the soul and the spirit. But when you do a word study, and I'm going to give you the words for these, there is a difference between them. For instance, for instance, when he talks about the soul or he talks about the mind, the word that's there in the Greek New Testament, it literally, literally is psyche. All right? Here's how they spell it. it it's it's P-S-Y-C-H-E. It, 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 it denotes the idea of a living soul. Sometimes, you listen to me, say amen. amen. Sometimes when we read the word of God, because I know you all read your word. <laughs> when we read the word of God and he talks about the heart of an issue or the heart of man, what he's talking about is the core of his soul, the core of his mind, his emotions, his conscience, his ability to make choices, our ability to make choices. I'm talking like, well, I'm not one of you. <laughs> that's, that's the heart. It's who we are. It's that soul. It's that conscience, that mind. Okay. All right. So that, that we're, we're Trinitarian. And so he made us that way. And, and, and here's the thing. The soul, listen to me. The soul is not regenerated. That's why he says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, to present yourself a living sacrifice bodily, but we renew what daily? Our mind. Or you can say soul, I heard it down there, somebody. The words are interchangeable. Every day I've got to, and sometimes all day long, I'm like, God, get that out of my brain. Sandra started talking this morning, I go, I need to send you that link that says seven things not to say in the past before he preaches. There, there are things that you don't say to me before I preach because and, and some of them will be good. But you don't say them to me before I start preaching because I'll be sidetracked, all right? And I don't want to be sidetracked unless it's of the Holy Spirit or we're going to the cafe over there in Central, okay? And so it's the mind, and you've got to renew it daily. It's not converted. Every day it's got to, got to die to self. You've got to die to yourself. And so that, that Greek word psyche there, it, it means living soul. It's the heart of the issue. It's the seed of what we have. But it, it, here's the other thing. Here, here's the other thing. Here's the other two words. We're also the body. Now, the Greek word there is soma, S-O-M-A, okay? And don't, don't call me out on my pronunciation. I, I'm from the South, right? It's how it is, all right? It, it, is, it is the entire material or physical structure of a human being, the physical part of the person. And Paul would write about it, and, and he would literally, when I just told you Romans 12, when he says, present your, your body, same word, present your body as a living sacrifice, put your soma that you give of your body, okay? He's created you, and so you do that. And then, the, and then there's the spirit. And you really want an in-depth study on it, come Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for one step, and I'll teach you what we believe about the charismatic baptism up there of, of the Spirit. It's a new one. It goes all the way back to Genesis, when I told you that cross reference a moment ago, to around verse 7, where he breathed pneuma, pneumonia, if you, you know, God bless you. The Spirit. And the Spirit is converted. Spirit has changed. The Spirit comes to live inside us. Do you understand that? Paul would write our key text. Did you not know that you house in your soma? Get your mind, psyche, out of the way. God Almighty in the Spirit. God values the body. God values. Matter of fact, He loves us as a whole. Not a donut hole, but as a whole. Okay? Alright? God loves us. He created us. Now, here's the thing. He values us as a whole because He created us and He clothed Himself. When He made us, He made us in God's image, in His own image. So we're trying. Okay? Now, you got all that good stuff. Now, here's, here's, where, we, here's where the rub hits the road and, and we're done. In our key text, Paul would write in the church of Corinth, one of the most wicked churches ever, ever, all right? If you would go back and do a study of the Corinthian church and you would, you would cross-reference it with the 21st century, you would see a lot of similarities. Self-centeredness, lust, what, whatever was good, whatever was right, whatever felt good. What, you, we, we have people that just make up stuff, 
they preach their own agenda. They, you, 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 you get what I'm saying? It's just tickle ears, pack yourself on the back, on the crowd, all that good stuff. Okay, it's just, it just was, it was crazy. All kind of theology being taught, all kind of crazy. And, and, and he would write, and if you go back and read that entirety in chapter six of First Corinthians, he talks about our bodies and and how we were doing sexual and perverted things with them, and just we we're giving ourselves away outside the context of marriage, and he, just all this, all this stuff, and all all of these things. And he said, "Don't you know?" He's like, "Duh." Don't you know how much God values your body? And every time you give it away, every time that you do something, you think, man, it's my body and it's not hurting anything. And really, it's only about what's inside and all that. Don't you know that you damage yourself and that you have to renew your psyche every day and, and that you get screwed up in the mind? And yes, I said it like that because you, you let people abuse you and you think it's okay at this point. You, you get it right. He said, don't you know that you house God Almighty in the Spirit? Don't you know that? Don't you know? And he, and he says, once you get that, you with me? He says, once you get that, 28 days of the minute, then you are to honor God with your body, your whole body. And so I begin to think as we launch, how do we honor God? What does he mean? Well, that word is interchangeable with glory. I'm to glorify my father with what he created. Kind of like the ashtray of my daddy when he smoked back in the day. You know what I'm saying? He's like, every time he, he's like, my boy made that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Says so you go be, that's all you're going to hear. Every, I'll get tweets and they'll be mad. Every time he looks, he says, man, I, I put my spirit in you. You are the temple of God. Not this building. It's why it doesn't matter where we meet as a church. And you say, if you need something to fast about this month, you fast about it. We got some big, big possibilities. I'll say possibilities. On the very near horizon. Matter of fact, we'll start meeting this week about it. You pray for one in this future. We don't want to do anything God doesn't want us to do. We're not going to go anywhere God doesn't send us. Because if He don't go with us, we will mess up. It's not about this. It's not about all these things. He says, I value you as an individual. You are the church. And don't you know this? And he says, because I created you. And he said, he said, I want you to honor. So what does it mean to honor? What does it mean to honor or glorify him? I think this is our launching place, and we will close this morning. I think we honor God with our body by first acknowledging that he is God. Paul said, you're not your own. You can't do what you want with something that, you, that doesn't belong to you. It's not yours. Now, he is a gracious God and a God that's uh, sovereign. He's so sovereign that he gives us free will. That's a whole different lesson, but that's just how sovereign he is. And so you can choose to be well, stupid. And most of us choose that. Or you can choose to acknowledge, because you don't make him God. Some say, well, just make him Lord of your life. Plus God, he's Lord. <laughs> and one day, if you don't get him while he gets good, every knee and every tongue will confess. I can be that old school preacher, man. Yeah, baby. Leather long and hot. I'm telling you. Because that's the truth. You don't make him anything. He is. He made you. You own yourself. And so where do we start this 28 days of commitment? How do I literally change my mind, my body, and my soul? You start by acknowledging that he is God Almighty. And he is the creator of you and the universe is in plural. He is one God and the only God. There is no other God. That's when we start 28 days of commitment. That's what will change this community by changing your life. Because if we change your life, I promise you, your house will change and your town will change. Your school will change. Your job will change. Your community will change. This nation will change. And we'll get over to Rwanda and we'll change them over there, right? You start by acknowledging that he is it. There is no other God. That diet program is not my God. That dating site is not my God. That social network... Uh-oh. Not your God. But you spend more time on it than you do in the Word of God or praying or serving Him. You say, how can you be so hard about it? Because I'm as guilty as you are. One finger this way and three back, baby. How do I honor God? I start by acknowledging it. My mother passed. I was, man, I'll show the pictures. I was so far out of shape, 46 in the waist, 54 in my blazer, and somewhere in excess of 310 to 20 pounds, in excess of that, I don't know. Miserable. Miserable. And there come a point I had to say, listen, God, I'm not in control of this. And some diet program, some fat, and this fasting's not a diet, man, I'm telling you. It's, it's not a diet. 
It's not about you getting skinny. It's about you becoming like Jesus. I do not think he was some kind of weenie. I think he was strong in his mind, in his body, and his spirit. Because he was spirit. He was the word. I honor God by acknowledging that he is God. I, I also acknowledge that he has gifted me. Inside of you, watch this, inside of you that have acknowledged that he is God and confessed him as Lord and Savior, you don't make him anything because he made you. You don't own yourself. You were bought with a high price. All right, so get to tell you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not chasing rabbits. I'm, I'm, I'm just being very to the word and to the point. And so I want you to get this. I acknowledge that he is God and he is my God and I got that out of the way. But when I acknowledge that, I also acknowledge that he has gifted me because in the moment I confess him, the spirit of God, according to the text, comes to live inside of me. And all the gifts or the fruits of the spirit, they're all inside of you. Someone said, no, I've got this gift. No, no, no. All of them are inside of you. And at the moment you need to exercise them, then the spirit will activate them. You understand me, right? And so you need to acknowledge that you are not a failure. You are not a fatty patty. You are God's special creation that he values, that he loves, and that he's got greatness inside of because his spirit, who he is, lives inside of you. That's how you change your life. You acknowledge that he is God and that you are God's child, and in doing so, he has gifted you. You are gifted, my friend. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your sorry daddy said. I don't care what your teacher said. I don't care what another preacher told you. I don't care if the church run you off. You are here this morning to be reminded you are a child of the Most High God. He has gifted you. And in that giftedness, I acknowledge something that is a theme here. There is greatness inside of me. Did you know that? Oh, you may not can see it just yet, because see, it ain't all got there. Yes, I said that. There is greatness inside of me. You say, what? Did we not just applaud the truth that God lives inside of you? There is greatness inside of you. You just got to develop it. You got to exercise it. You got to present your body. You got to say, God, I'm going to honor you with everything. My whole being. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge that you are God. I acknowledge that you give to me. And I've acknowledged the fact that there is greatness in me. I will not settle, Dusty. I will not settle for this moment because I know my best days are right over there. Amen. I will not settle for this relationship. I will not settle for this status quo. I will no longer compromise. I may quit, but I will get up tomorrow and start again in the grace of God. I am gifted and I'm destined for greatness. So to honor God and to launch this series, I spent a lot of time introducing and telling you things and saying this is opportunities and all this good stuff. But to get here is the overview is that this thing is about you honoring God with your whole being because he values you in a whole. It is to acknowledge that he's God, yes, but we have to get to a place not only do we acknowledge God, here's closure. You gotta move to action. I can't just acknowledge him. I, listen, I don't need to be somebody that just gets wound up in here. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to put it into action and I need to put it into application. When I exit this building, I'm telling you, when you leave here is when the rubber hits the road. I'm telling you that when I'm telling you these 28 days of commitment, I will preach my lung completely out and my voice gone. I'm telling you, I will give you everything I got, but you have to put it into action. You've talked about it long enough. You said I'm going to get healthy long enough. You said I'm not going to do that again long enough. You said he is God and there is none beside him. He has gifted me and I'm destined for greatness. Then bless God. Start moving toward greatness. Don't settle anymore. Amen. Action. Action. You say help me. Here's the action. All right? This is, this, is, this is what we want. The first mode of action. It's real simple. It's so hard to do. It's just surrender. It's surrender. It's saying, I'm laying the alcohol here. 
I'm laying the cigarettes here. I'm laying the dope here. I read where somebody posted they've been 10 days cannabis free. He said, that's silly. Man, I've been struggling with it 10 years. It's, it, 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 it's captured your life. I'm going to lay that pornography here. I'm going to lay those donuts here. I'm going to lay the Starbucks. A new confession would start. Surrender. If you're going to get anywhere in the kingdom of God, if you're absolutely going to tap into that greatness, it starts with surrender. You've got to lose yourself to find yourself. You have to lose your life and gain it. You understand I'm not making this up. Like this is the Bible. So the action, the, 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 literally after 28 days, we're going to see revival. It's got to start with this action. That, hey, I surrender. I, I'm laying it all down. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what fast. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm so intimidated by the gym. I'm so all these things. And you don't even have to go to goals. Whatever you do, listen, whatever. Well, I'm telling you how you move from point A to point B. From glory to glory. Honor God. He said, that action has to start with surrender. You've got to die to yourself. And then you have to constantly remember, you listening, child? You have to constantly remember it is a step at a time. You remember the psalmist said it and said it well. Steps of a good man, that word there is a, is a generic word for mankind. It means men and women. Well, those steps were ordered by the Lord. Well, that word steps literally means one step at a time. You know why that is? You know why when he gives us the model for us to pray this day our daily bread? It's because every day it's a fresh and a new. And you may screw up throughout that day, but every step is ordered by the Lord. And you've got to understand, if you start this fast and you fall off of it, or you start this exercise or you fall off of it, you start this Bible study and you fall off of it, you start this prayer and you fall off of it. Listen, this thing's about fluidity. This thing's about joy, it's about grace, and it's about mercy, and it's about being in love with God. And it's about, and listen, just, I'm in love with my wife. I mean, I'm in love with my wife, but it don't mean we always communicate well. I don't understand her. You're not going to understand everything. You're not, you're going to feel like a failure. I promise you, I'm telling you, spiritual warfare is going to be at a heightened state in your life. I'm telling you, and I'm not prophesying, but the tires will go flat. The dog will get sick. The cat will tear something up. I'm telling you, it will be a battle like never before. One step at a time. And it starts with surrender. Stand to your feet, please.